The idea of percent error is a very simple concept and you're going to see on your density lab that you're going to be doing this at least four times where you're, you're uh, calculating the percentage of error. And I wanted to do this video because a lot of you didn't get this at class today. We, didn't, we ran out of time at the end of the period. So uh, let's look at this thing called theoretical value. And notice that theoretical value winds up here and here. So with theoretical value, this is something that we get out of a textbook something that is an accepted value, or we get it out of a reference book, or a published table of some sort. So theoretical value is very, very important to us because it tells us very, 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 very accurate information. Now, when you do an experiment here in class or anywhere else, you're talking about this value right here, the value from the experiment, which most likely will not be exactly the same as the theoretical. That's because we don't have an uh, accurate enough stuff. Uh, you're not an experienced chemist. And a lot of things go against you to be able to get exactly the right value. So it's kind of nice to know how close did you get. And let's, let's look at this defined again. Theoretical value, the right up here, is accepted value as seen in published charts and reference books. You might want to stop this video and copy this down. This is good information. Your experimental value, on the other hand, is you as a student perform an experiment and calculate the density of anything else from your measurements in the lab. So, there, this idea of theoretical is like the center point of a line. And if in your results you come up with something like 24 instead of 15, then you're, you're you know, fairly far off and you want to be able to get that fixed or at least figure out how far off you are. And that's what our theoretical stuff is all about. So this guy, we're, we're short. Okay, we're a short 10. Let's figure out the differences here and why we have the absolute value whenever you see theoretical value. So I have at the bottom that formula from the last page, and let's work it out for this particular guy over here. Okay, we're going to find out what the theoretic difference between theoretical and experimental is. So Theo out of the book said that we had 15. Forget about the unit of measure right now, it doesn't really matter. So the 15, I shouldn't have put that over 1. The 15, you know, let's just start all over again. This 15 is going to be our Theo, and we are going to uh, be subtracting that from the experimental value which we got, which was 15. Uh, not 15, sorry, 10. And so we had the 10 over here, and on the bottom, we're also going to put our Theo, which is the 15. So 15 is the Theo. We have it on the bottom, as you will see. You see down here, our theoretical value was 15, which is what we have here. And then our value from the experiment was what we have right up here, the 10. And then we're taking the 15 again, the theoretical, and putting it on the bottom. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by 100 and take the absolute value. So, all we have to do now is say, we're 15, we're, we're, we're our difference here is 5. Okay, so we've got 5, I'm going to redo it over here, 5 over 15 times 100. And again, we're in absolute value. And now we look at that and we say 5 divided by 15 is 0.33 
And so that's going to be equal to, and by the way, this guy over here is a minus because the theoretical value, when we subtract that, comes out to a minus 5. But because of the absolute value things, that you see these lines right here, and you saw them in the original calculation here and here, and you see them down here and here in the fancy stuff that you saw on the last slide. So, now we have 0.33 times 100. And that's going to be equal to 33%. And you notice, even though that 33 was negative inside here, the absolute value thing changes it to a positive. It's always going to be a positive number. So, that's how that first one works, and this would be your actual answer. And this is how you should show your work. Now, let's, let's imagine the next one with an actual unit of measure, and we're going to say we started at 15, and we're, we're 24 off to the right. Well, this time, it's going to come out positive. So, let's extend this page a little bit. Our theoretical, again, was 15, so that's going to be the negative. The actual was 24, and the theoretical on the bottom is 15 times 100, and we have our absolute value here and here. So this guy, when we add, or when we uh, subtract it all out on the next thing, it's going to come out 24 minus 15 is 9. And on the bottom we have 15 times 100. And again, it's absolute value. So we get out our calculator and we find out the number is... Six, uh, after we multiply by 100... Oh, let's do it before we multiply by 100. Our number is going to be point. 6 times 100. And the actual number at the end is 66% error. That's a pretty big error, but it could be big sometimes. So now let's look at some actual homework problems. And I think I'll do this on a second video. So we'll stop for now, and I'll see you on the next video.